and welcome to the Money Show, your one-stop destination for all your personal finance queries. I'm Kavita Thaplial and uh, today again we'll be talking about every aspect of your financial planning and so we'll be answering your uh, portfolio queries. All you have to do is just send across your portfolio questions. Uh, you can send across your questions on our WhatsApp number which is 8657974571 and you can also email us your queries on the Money Show at etnow.tv. Let's begin the show and Aditya Billa Sun Life uh, Mutual Fund announced the launch of Target Maturity Fund named Aditya Birla Sun Life Russell IBX uh, AAA NBFC HFC Index September 2026 fund. Uh, this fund invests in India's top uh, NBFCs and HFCs. Uh, the new fund offer will remain open from uh, September 30th uh, to October 7th, 2024. The minimum investment is rupees 1,000 and the minimum additional investment uh, uh, year uh, is uh, almost 1,000. But there is no exit load involved in this scheme. And uh, also, uh, the fund has moderate interest rate risk and relatively low credit risk investors looking for a passive uh, debt option with an investment horizon ranging from 3 to 24 months can consider investing in this fund but then uh, let's talk more on this I have with me Kostu Gupta co-head uh, fixed income at the Birlas and life AMC Kostu, good evening and welcome to the show and uh, okay so let's talk about the details why a target maturity fund on these lines uh, you know the one that invests in NBFCs and HFCs first let's begin uh, uh, with the trigger and rationale behind such a launch. Thank you, Kavita, for uh, this opportunity. Look, uh, from a macro perspective, of course, uh, globally, what it seems like that the inflation has moderated quite, moderated quite a bit, and growth seems risk has started emerging, like we discussed in the last time, and which is why it seems that incremental policy action is moving towards the changing its color, towards focusing on growth rather than just inflation. And at this point of time, what we are looking is clearly that the rates have peaked and probably RBI also in current backdrop over course of next six to 12 months will start reducing rates. And thus, uh, the reinvestment risk is the biggest risk for the investors. And to contain that risk, uh, what we have proposing now investors to start locking rates when yields are near to their peak and which is why we have come out with this offering. Now, there are various ways through which you can play this risk, but in terms of spreads, what is clearly available uh, is visible that if you look deep dive into the curve, the HFCs and uh, NBFC as a curve, which represent the financial sectors, the spread there is still remains elevated despite uh, a reasonable amount of rally on the yield curve that we have seen in GILT and to some extent in, in AAA PSU corporate bonds, and which is why from a spread perspective, we think it's the right time to start locking these high yielding curves, which are trading closer to 8%. Uh, and uh, so we, accordingly, we have come out with these target maturity funds. All right, so typically, uh, uh, tell me one thing, what kind of uh, return expectation should one have uh, in this kind of a fund, considering we are uh, already entering a, a rate cut uh, scenario or a regime in India as well now? So these funds, they are open-ended debt-oriented funds with a very fixed maturity profile. And what they will be mirroring is the underlying index, which has been approved by the rating agency, and it has been approved by the regulator as well. As we speak uh, on the fund that you are talking about, the underlying index is yielding closer to 8%, and we will be mimicking these uh, underlying index. So investors who have an investment horizon till maturity, they can expect returns somewhat similar to the underlying index uh, in terms of gross YTL. All right. Uh, talking about target maturity fund and uh, 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 this kind of an uh, uh, investment uh, where uh, conservative uh, investors or maybe investors, you know, where they don't want to take much risk in their uh, on, on their capital. Uh, how much should be the allocation and also what's going to be the tax treatment? So as far as. First, on the construction of the portfolio, uh, as we know that on the fixed income investment, there are three predominant risks that the investor get exposed to. One is the liquidity risk, then interest rate risk, and, and uh, uh, credit risk. Because these funds of the underlying index is predominantly, or rather 100% invested in only AAA index, we perceive that this to be a, a somewhat moderate uh, credit risk uh, because they will be investing in, in only AAA long-term issuers. From a liquidity perspective, uh, the Investors, unlike fixed maturity plans, they can come and exit without any exit load and without any, uh, you can say, uh, the ban period. So that takes care of their liquidity risk as well. Uh, and uh, because these uh, 
funds on target maturity fund side, they will be uh, broadly in the range of two year to four year. We think that the interest rate uh, risk is also somewhat limited given that the interest rates have already peaked. Uh, on the tax treatment side, of course, uh, these will be at par with other debt funds, which means that investors will be taxed at the marginal rate of their tax level, which the individual investors or the corporate investors are investing with. Uh, sure. One very uh, important aspect to invest in uh, uh, these kind of uh, debt funds of fixed income instrument is the kind of rating they have. Uh, this fund says that uh, you know it will have 100% uh, triple A rated corporate bonds. Uh, could you please simplify this particular sort of rating and uh, how one should be assured with a triple A uh, uh, rated corporate bonds as a part of the portfolio of a fund? If you look the underlying index or uh, broadly what we are promising is to mimic the underlying index and the underlying index has only AAA, long-term AAA rated corporate bond, which where the risk uh, as far as the credit risk that you're talking about is perceived to be too low. And uh, so in that manner, uh, the credit risk is looks to be reasonable and negligible. Uh, from, from a construction perspective, what we are promising investors that at a group level, there will be a cap of 25% and at an issuer level, there will be a cap of closer to 12%. In a sense, we will be uh, uh, investing in about 10 to 15 different issuers so, uh, so as to make sure there is no concentration risk from an issuer perspective and from a group perspective. And given the uh, highest rating that these funds will be investing into, uh, one, one can assume that the perceived liquidity risk is also somewhat manageable. And uh, in, in that backdrop, uh, what I can say, and which is why the risk meters and other things, it, it is very clear that these, these funds, they do carry a moderate risk uh, from, from, a, from a duration perspective, but from a credit perspective, the risk is perceived to be low. Kostov, also tell me something. Uh, what about uh, rebalancing this particular uh, portfolio? How is that scheduled and how will you do it? So, because we will try and invest uh, the underlying investments nearer to the maturity of the target maturity fund, the uh, reinvestment risk is only limited to the intermediate coupons which will be coming up uh, and rest everything uh, will be more or less invested till the maturity part of it. So the reinvestment risk is somewhat limited uh, and also from time to time, uh, the, uh, the manufacturer of the index, which are these rating agencies uh, that we have adapted to, they will be reviewing the index construction every six months and basis the liquidity part of it that they will uh, they will change the constituents uh, and so as to make sure that the only the highest liquidity or the highest issuer in, in this particular category, they remain the part of the index. So, uh, so taking both into account, it, it takes care of the liquidity risk that you are speaking about. Uh, Kosto, one more question is, uh, why not a longer uh, time horizon or uh, longer lock-in period? Uh, 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 why are we just uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, three to 24 months deadline? Any specific reason behind that? And what's, what's actually the benefit behind locking your money for this period? As interest rates uh, in the economy are picking up, the most important risk that investors get exposed to is the reinvestment risk uh, that in case the policymakers reduce the rates in line with the macro developments, uh, the intermediate cash flows that you are Okay, I think there is some uh, technical issue. So as uh, Kostub was uh, explaining, uh, since we are in the rate cut scenario, it will be beneficial or uh, uh, the, the right way to make use of a debt investment uh, uh, would be to uh, lock in for that particular window, the window that this fund is also offering. And considering uh, the scenario and the, call, the funds call on NBFCs and HFCs, they have this uh, NFO uh, going on till uh, 7th October 2024. Uh, Kostub, if you can hear me now, I would also want to ask you the risk or underlying risk that investors might want to understand before putting their money in this. Okay, I don't think I have um, uh, I have Kostov uh, with me uh, connected on the show, but then uh, uh, we shall move on uh, with this segment.